a local version of Drupal running and we have the latest development version and we have Git, the next thing that we need to get familiar with is Drupal.org's issue queue. This is where the community talks about all of the work that's going on with uh, Drupal.org and the Drupal code. So if we want to get involved with the code, we need to go where the conversation is. This lesson is going to walk you through the basics of what is the issue queue and how to use it. So we're going to go back to the ladder and we're going to move ourselves up to the getting started in the issue queue lesson. And when we get here, there's a lot of information, but I want to start off by looking at the prerequisites up here at the top. And uh, it's we're going to test an issue that we create. So um, there's a Drupal 8 sandbox that has a bug in it. And if you click there, you'll see that you can get to the git clone uh, command that you need to get a copy of that. And then you need to set that up on your local uh, web server, which you've set up in previous lessons. So this is my Drupal Ladder Sandbox, uh, which is from that particular uh, sandbox there. So, um, so first you need to make sure you have that set up and ready to go, and I already have that done. And then uh, what we're gonna be doing is going through and uh, talking a little bit about uh, looking at the issue queue, wh what that means, and then we're gonna create our own issue. You'll notice there's also this resource here, which is uh, links to some documentation just about how to actually issue, make an issue. So um, this is uh, there's a lot of documentation for double checking, and this video is just gonna kind of run through the steps um, with a little bit of background. Uh, I'm going to go to my dashboard and there's a bunch of uh, queues over here. Um, this is for Drupal core. So I'm just going to go into one of these just so we can look at what the issue queue looks like. Get a little orientation here. So when you go into uh, an issue queue with the search options, you'll see we have things like status. So the open ones are needing work, needing review. There's also a variety of closed statuses. So this is sort of, you know, where where is this thing right now? Priority critical, major, normal, or minor. So how important is the issue in terms of getting it done? Um, the category, so bug report, task, feature support. These are all um, in every issue regardless of the project. Uh, there's a version number so that you make sure you're lodging against the right version number. Components with core, all of the different core components are there, but each project can define its own components. So uh, in contrib, you'll find quite a different component list. Then uh, we also have issue tags. So uh, you can also sort by a, a particular tag on an issue. And so like novice uh, is a particular one which is handy to have. So you can just restrict everything to novice. Um, so let's move down and actually look at some issues here. Um, and you'll notice, so we have some col columns that are going on. Uh, there's the, you know, the title of it, the status. The status is also indicated by the color. So you'll see the top one is active, which is gray. Needs review is yellow. Needs work is pink. Uh, reviewed and tested by the community is green. Uh, <clears throat> so you have this overview that gives you some basic information about what's going on with the issue at the time. Getting uh, familiar with what these different terms are and how they're used is a key part to learning how to really use the issue queue. And as I said, there's a lot of documentation about this and just going in and using the queues, um, you'll get very familiar with, with what various things are meaning here. So let's go back to our lesson here and we're gonna come down and look at what we're gonna, what we're gonna actually walk through. We're gonna create an issue and then we're gonna leave a comment and then we're gonna update the summary on it. And so to start things off, we need to go create an issue. So we're going to create an issue in the sandbox project, um, which has been specifically created for these lessons here. And so we go in here and you can see here's an issue queue that I've gotten to from a direct link. But I want to show you how you can get to that from a project page as well. So I'm going to go to the actual project page, like a module or a theme. This is just a sandbox, but it's still a project. Um, and in the sidebar, there's issues. And if you click on the advanced search, I recommend that because you should search before you create issues every time. So you can do filtering and search for keywords this way. Um, so anytime you're on a project page, right sidebar, you can go into the issue queue from there. And then at the top, you'll see there's this link for creating a new issue. So that's what we're going to do. You'll notice there's some documentation and notices at the top here um, linking off to how to report an issue using templates. You'll also notice that there uh, is a notice that security issues should not be reported here because this is very public and we like to keep security issues private until they've been corrected. So 
just keep that in mind. But let's go down and look at the actual form here itself. Um, the project name's already filled in for us because it knew where we came from. And what we need to do is fill out this information. So I'm gonna do miscellaneous, I'm gonna do bug report, and I'm gonna copy and paste this text for the title. So let's go back to my issue now that I have that copied. So component miscellaneous, you can see <clears throat> the various components I said are quite different uh, than they are in core normally. But miscellaneous is what we're doing here. I'm going to do a bug report, uh, not a feature request. And then I'll put in my title and I'm going to leave the other things at their defaults um, because those are fine. It's a normal active uh, issue right now. And then I need to do my description and I'm going to go back to my um, lesson here and just copy and paste this as well. So we'll take that text, copy that, come back, paste, oh, Rama. You'll notice um, that, uh, so this is written out with a little explanation. It shows the current situation, uh, has this code tag for formatting. You can also use the, uh, the little editor here, HTML helper that we have to format code. Um, you'll see what this looks like once we submit this, this issue, um, just to make it sort of stand out and that this is what's in the page. Uh, and then there's also a proposal for a solution. And we'll go down and just save the issue. So we just gave it a title, we gave it a description, we explained what was going on, and then we'll just go ahead and save the issue. So that's creating a new issue. Uh, it's now in the issue queue. And you can see that we have uh, the title and we have uh, the all the things that we selected are, are sort of in a box at the top. And then we have our description is in the issue summary. And you can see how the code tag made that text stand out. So now that we have the issue created, let's go back to our lesson instructions here. And what it wants us to do now is actually confirm the bug and leave a comment, which is why we got the sandbox site set up that has the bug in it so that we can go find it. So I'm going to go back to my sandbox and um, this is um, some text that's at the node add star whatever. Um, so this is when you add content. This is adding a new node. So I'm going to go to add content and I'll just click article. It doesn't matter which one I pick. And you can see in the URL, this is node add something, um, but they didn't have the instructions for the steps to get there without just typing it into the URL. Um, so if I scroll down to the bottom here, uh, then I can click on URL pass settings. And, uh, and this is where I could type in, in the URL alias. And this is where the instructions are. Now I'm going to take a screenshot of this. I use uh, an application called Sketch. Um, so, and, uh, so I took a screenshot because I've, I've found it and I've seen it, uh, make it a little smaller here and I'll just grab a box to kind of highlight it. You can use whatever screenshot thing if you want, if you, if you have one, if you don't, that's okay. But, um, it's really, really handy thing to use with issues so people can see what you're talking about. So I'm going to just, I'll go ahead and put this on my desktop so that I can use that, uh, later. Um, and now what I want to do is actually leave a comment. So I've gone through and I've seen what they're talking about. Um, although I think I could probably improve a little bit. So uh, I'm going to go down here underneath the issue and leave a comment. And you notice I can change uh, any of these settings on here. Um, so you can change them, but you should obviously only change them if it's a meaningful change. Um, I don't need to change any of the statuses here. Uh, I just uh, want to leave my, my comment. So I'm going to basically put some text in here that just says, yep, I got you. Uh, that makes sense. And I also want to just add those further instructions because it might make it easier for other people to find it. So the other thing I want to do here is add that screenshot that I took. Um, and so if we go down here to the file attachments, I can find uh, the image that I took and go ahead and attach that. And uh, you'll notice it's, it's listed here. So it's going to be part of the issue if I just saved it right now. Uh, so I can just go ahead and say, see screenshot below or attached or something like that. I can also, if I want to just uh, actually Im embed that image in so that people can just see it without having to click a link. So if I click on the little image thing in the editor here, um, I need to get the URL. So you can see the URL is right underneath here. So I'll just copy that and paste that into the image URL. If I say, okay, it's going to force me to do alternative text as well. So I need to just uh, quickly describe what the image is. 
and now it inserts uh, the HTML that's required to display that. So uh, now I can go ahead and save. And here's my comment. And you can see the text and you can see the screenshot that's been embedded in the issue. Um, and people can actually click on the attachment as well if they would like to see the image that way. So the last thing we're going to do is um, actually update the summary, the issue summary on the issue. So let's go back to our lesson so we can see what it is that we need to be doing there. Um, uh, in the text here, you see there's a link here to this issue summary template, um, which is really handy and it, it's sort of one of those standards and, and you should get familiar with it and used to using it. So here's the actual template itself. There's a lot of uh, explanation for what the different sections are underneath on this page, if you, so you can read up on that. But I'm just going to copy and paste that that sort of template that was there. And I'm going to come back. Now, I don't want to leave a comment. I left a comment, but what I want to actually do is update the issue summary itself using the edit tab on the issue node itself. Um, because I want to update it and make the actual issue summary at the top clear to everybody who comes to the new issue. Um, I feel like so that we can improve it and make it easier for people to find out what's going on and work on it. Now, the first thing I want to do is paste the template in above the original issue because the last line is the original report. So I want the original report to stay there at the bottom. And then I want to make sure that I put the person's name who did the original issue because I'm, I'm modifying the original issue now. And we want to retain that, that original uh, issue that was reported. So once I've done that and I have that, that part of it done, I need to go through each of the lines here and update the text that's on there. So I'm just going to paste some, some text in here so you don't have to watch me type. Um, and then I can just save that. Now when I do that, you'll notice I'm editing the actual node and I'm getting that I'm required to actually leave a revision log message on this. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and just leave that real quickly. If you have something specific, like I'm updating blah, blah, blah about it, um, you should put that in there. And now when I save it, everything works fine. And you'll see that the new summary that, that I added is now the top part of the issue. So people can get up to speed very quickly and see what's going on. All of the comments are still there below. Um, but this is a great way to help out in the issue queue to keep things moving along for people. Um, so that's a brief introduction to the issue queue. Um, you should go in and start w working in it and playing in it and uh, get really familiar with it because this is the main tool that our community uses.